Hey guys, my name is Jensen. I am the lead brewer here at Pure Project. Been working here for about four and a half years now. My name is Chris Guzman. I'm the education program manager. I'm an advanced Cicerone, and I'm essentially the liaison between the back of the house, what Jensen does, and then the front of the house, customer facing. Uh, two of the three owners of Pure Project started uh, Pure Project in the jungles of Costa Rica in what is a rural town known as Manuel Antonio. Um, they kind of just started as home brewing, doing their own thing down there, trying to open up a brewery. Um, they actually got a pretty decent following uh, to the locals, but due to uh, big infrastructure and wastewater treatment, it was kind of unfortunate that we couldn't open up in Costa Rica because basically all of our wastewater would go straight in the ocean. And Pure Project being a very environmentally friendly and uh, just advocates for the environment. We couldn't do that. Um, that's not good for our environment. So we kind of jumped ship from Costa Rica and found this spot here in Miramar, California, San Diego, and we opened up. Uh, the most important thing for us, we are inspired by our agriculture. We're inspired by what's in season, especially organically. So um, in the springtime, we do actually beers using organic strawberries from our yeah. friends over at J Organics. We try to source our malt locally. Um, we have a connection over in Alameda with our friends over at Admiral Malting, so we try to use their stuff. It's always keeping in mind, lower your carbon footprint, and then just really let what the farmers do shine. Yeah, and a lot of our malt that does come from Admiral Malting, it's all uh, no-till farming. Uh, there's no water that is being used, there's no pesticides, no really anything. It's as clean as you could get and as little footprint as possible to the earth. Exactly, and now this year, uh, in January of 2021, we're able to celebrate five years and we've stuck to our guns. We've always thought about giving back to the community. We are a 1% for the planet, so 1% of our top line sales goes back to grass-rooted, vetted organizations that help out the essentially the environment with yeah. protecting our winters, with cleaning up our waterways, going into the oceans that we'd love to serve. This is all focusing on, hey, how can we be a more conscious uh, player in this world? And we also go through the plastic bank. We're removing, what, 10,000 pounds of plastic this year in 2020 uh, from the oceans. And we're planting 100,000 trees uh, in the next five years. So through our beers, we're able to initiate and advocate towards uh, these really incredible uh, organizations. Yeah, to us, this beer is more than just beer. It's really for the environment. It's, it's helping out the environment, not uh, hurting it. This is literally canned an hour ago. Yeah. Oh God, it's going all over. Why did I cringe? So today you guys are going to be enjoying Force of Nature. Force of Nature. Uh, <laughs> this is a single we call Murky IPA. Um, it is brewed with Nelson, Citra, and Amarillo. And it's one of our quarterly core IPAs that is going to be available from January to March. Yes, and basically with this one, um, we release limited releases every two weeks. And they probably last maybe two to three weeks. But for us, we're so stoked on Force of Nature that we're like, you know what? Let's keep brewing that every three to four weeks and have that uh, readily available in our, uh, in our fridge. So, And this is probably my favorite quarterly core that we make. It's also. phenomenal. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. So for this one, like Jensen was mentioning, we're using hand-selected Nelson, hand-selected Citra, and Amarillo. Yeah. Nelson has that big, punchy white wine, green grape crushed, just freaking bit in of, your face. Bit about that diesel, too. A Little bit of that, like, just punchy. It hits you on yeah. the nose, and then what's really nice, you get that quick pop on, quick pop on the nose, but then tucked underneath, you're looking at orange marmalade. Um, there's this really almost interesting stone fruit characteristic yeah, underneath. Kind of like a like the peach skin, peach fuzziness almost. It's got that like slight, um, not sour, but tanginess almost mm -hmm. on the very back end. There's a lot of Great. like papaya, uh, not papaya, pineapple coming out. So like you were yeah. saying, tangy in the sense of like acidity from pineapple yes. with that yeah, sweetness. Yeah, exactly. This is exactly what we should be drinking. This is fantastic, dude. Yeah, so this uh, can, what we're drinking right now is only canned about an hour and a half ago. So you guys are gonna have it. It's gonna be about a week and a half old at that time. 
which is super fresh. fresh as you can get basically um, so this beer um, as a lot of our beers is brewed with a lot of California grown malt um, Admiral malting we mentioned it a little bit earlier mm -hmm. it has the Admiral Pilsner malt it also it's all floor malted Admiral Pilsner malt um, we have their unmalted wheat and their malted oats um, so a lot of this is uh, as locally sourced as we can get for our grain profile. Um, and it, it gives a different perspective of the beer when you're using local. It gives terroir to the beer. A lot of it, sometimes a lot of beer tastes the same where if you're using local ingredients and using them right, like it comes out in the final product and this is super special to us. Absolutely, and even like jumping off of that where we're using San Diego municipal water and then just suggesting with a couple different salts, that also gives yeah. the flavor of San Diego. Uh, or here in San Diego, we have a little bit of a harder water. San, uh, out in Brooklyn and the Northeast, there's super soft, soft water. So this is still that like uniqueness, that terroir that you're mentioning. And also we're able to now hand select hops. So for us, we're using the right spices, uh, that Nelson, that Citra, and then we just yeah old school fans of Amarillo, toss that in there, providing that orange marmalade note. And for us, we don't just go lightly on the hops. Oh, for we, this. we hit it hard. <laughs> exactly. This is a, about a four pound per barrel dry hop alone. So overall, the beer has about five pounds per barrel in it. Um, Citra, hand selected. Amarillo, probably only about 20% of our dry hop, uh, with Citra and Nelson being the other 80%, about 50-50 on those two. Um, but the Citra gives it a really nice like dink and really the orange marmalade comes from that Citra. Oh, 100%. And for these beers, what we're trying to do, um, and when we're drinking it out of this glass, you see that nice tapered up top, all those bubbles are bursting, they're creating all those aromatic compounds, and it's just hitting you in the face with aroma. Yeah. And that's what we're shooting for. Dude, right. Crash Bandicoot was the shit back then. Like, I remember- I played the shit out of Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot Crash Team Racing? Oh, that was, that was ahead of its time. Oh, so good. Crash Bandicoot 3, I remember I played the whole game uh, in the attic. Uh, it was like 95 degrees in Pennsylvania, and I lived in the attic for some odd reason. Yeah. Maybe like that kid that no one liked. But I just remember just sitting there just going at it. Crash Bandicoot was, yeah. for me, that Spyro, like... Oh, uh, Sp Spyro had a remaster this past year, too. Did they really? Oh, yeah. Uh, I've also been... I have a Switch, so I've been playing a bunch of it. Well, my girlfriend's been playing Animal Crossing. For the record. <laughs> girlfriend's been playing Animal Crossing. I don't have that. Super Mario Odyssey. Um, this new game called Hades. Fucking rad. Oh, Sorry, yes. I probably shouldn't say fucking on this. I don't. Everybody's over 21. It's over 21. That's true. <laughs> fucking rad game. <laughs> uh, in 2015, when we opened up uh, Pure Project, it was in that super small. If you guys have been there in Miramar, you're shoulder to shoulder, you're holding your flight. Uh, you're trying to go for a beer, there's a line out the door. Uh, what seems crazy before COVID times, um, but luckily, humbly, we've been able to uh, get our first t uh, external taste room or satellite taste room down at Balboa Park, literally a block away from one of the most gorgeous parks in the nation. Then we opened it up, opened up a second satellite taste room up in Carlsbad Village. That's where we're gonna be aging some of our barrel aged showers. When you guys walk up there, go for it to go. Uh, Quick shout out to Shayna, who's the manager over there. You'll see these big, beautiful red fooders. That's where we're gonna be aging uh, some of our uh, highly prized barrel aged showers. And then after that, we are actually gonna be kind of uh, upgrading our barrel system. Yeah, so uh, we're gonna be moving most of our production up to Vista, to a formerly defunct brewery now. Uh, and that's gonna be up in Vista, hopefully be opening up in February, March time for the tasting room. Um, in these times, hopefully we'll be able to open up outside. If not, it'll be to go only, but we'll still be up there. And then coming about summertime of 2021, we will be opening up a big beer garden in North Park. Um, right on El Cajon, right? Right on El Cajon Boulevard. Yeah. We're gonna be a block away from the home brewer. Uh, super close to that, El Cajon and 30th Street. Uh, super excited, it's gonna be all outside. That's and then a 4,000 square foot outside uh, beer garden with about a 1,500, 2,000 square foot indoor area as well there. 
So super humbly, um, at the end of the day, it's about the ingredients, it's about giving back to the community, it's about focusing on uh, the earth as a whole, contributing as much as we can, and we just honestly just happen to make beer, and we're pretty excited about that. Just happened to. Cheers. Cheers. Enjoy, guys. Cheers. Cheers.